warm welcome to all our guests joining from all around the world today uh, for yet another exciting seminar. So I, Dr. Vinod from Symbiosis Institute of Business Management Pune and Dr. Anabel Gutierrez from University of London, feel honored and privileged to moderate fifth seminar and third edition of the seminar series on digital future for business and society, emerging perspective on the metaverse. The seminar series is jointly hosted by Professor Yogesh Kumar Devedi, who is Professor of Digital Marketing and Innovations and Founding Director of the Digital Future for Sustainable Business and Society Research Group at School of Management, Swansea University, Wales, UK. Next, we have Dr. Laurie Hughes. He is Senior Lecturer within Strategic Operation Group and Founding Member of the Digital Future for Sustainable Business and Society Research Group at School of Management, Swansea University, Wales, UK. Last but not least, we also have Professor Ramakrishnan Raman. He is currently Director of Symbiosis Institute of Business Management, Pune, Dean Faculty of Management, Symbiosis International Dean University, Director of Strategy and Development, Symbiosis Group. Our entire seminar series is jointly supported by Digital Marketing and Analytics, SIG Academy of Marketing, Green Nobel, IAE Graduate School of Management, a Green Nobel INP School of the University of Green Nobel Alps, the e-business and e-government SIG British Academy of Management, the UK Academy for Information System UK AIS. So to tell you something very briefly about the seminar series itself, emerging technologies such as AI, blockchain, Internet of Things and the metaverse undoubtedly offer transformative potential for augmentation and potential replacement of human performed tasks and activities within a wide range of industrial, intellectual, and social application. The impact and widespread adoption of these technologies is likely to be transformational within sectors ranging, ranging from agriculture, finance, healthcare, manufacturing, retail, supply chain, logistic, and utilities. The seminar series on digital future for business and society, emerging perspective on the metaverse, will present various perspectives from a number of leading expert speakers to highlight the opportunities and challenges posed by rapid emergence of the metaverse. The seminar series will not only offer a timely and thought-provoking insight into the metaverse, but also its impact on the future of business management and societal factors impacted by growth, direction, and widespread adoption of uh, this new immersive technology. Today, we have with us three eminent thought leaders, Professor Samuel Fosuwamba, Dr. Michel M. Kiros, and Dr. Anuragini Sirish, who will uh, share their thoughts on the topic, Unlocking the Metaverse in Manufacturing and Operations Management. To tell you something about our speakers of the day, Professor Wamba is full professor in Information System and Data Science and uh, Associated Dean of Research at TBS Education France. He is also a distinguished visiting professor at the University of Johannesburg, South Africa. At also at US, UCSI Graduate Business School, UCSI University, Malaysia. He earned his PhD in Industrial Engineering from Polytechnic School of Montreal, Canada. He leads the Center of Excellence in Artificial Intelligence and Business Analytics at TBS Education. He is among 2% of the most influential scholars globally based on Mendeley's database that include 1 lakh plus scientists for 2020 and 2021. He ranks in Clarivate's 1% most cited scholars in the world for the years 2020 and 2021, also in CDO Magazine's leading academic data leaders 2021. Based on Research.com 2021 ranking, he is France's third top business and management scientist. Next, we have Dr. Michel M. Kiros. Dr. Michel is Associate Professor and Researcher of Operation and Supply Chain Management at FGP EAE ASP. Brazil and Latin South America Regional Ambassador of the Academy of Management, Operation and Supply Chain Management Division. He earned his PhD in Naval Architecture and Ocean Engineering at University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Currently, uh, Dr. Michel is Associate Editor in the International Journal of Logistics Management, RAUSP Management Journal and Editorial Review Board of International Journal of Information Management. He published uh, his paper in top tier journals in the domains of operations and supply chain management, IEC international journals and conferences. Dr. Kiros has been also serving as guest editor for leading journals, including 
International Journal of Operation and Production Management, Journal of Business Logistics, International Journal of Production Research, and list goes on and on. Last but not the least, we have uh, Dr. Anuragni Sirish. Uh, Dr. Anuragni Sirish is uh, Associate Professor at Institute Mines Telecom Business School, France. She is elected member from her institution for governance of LITEM, which is a laboratory, a joint research laboratory under the University of Paris Clay, France. Her research focuses on studying the humanistic and instrumental impact of several socio-technical phenomena in broad areas of digital work, digital innovation, and uh, digital society. Her research work has been published at many uh, journal of international reviews like Journal of Management Information Systems, European Journal of Information Systems, uh, Information System Journal, and many more. She has also presented her work in several ISM management conferences, including International Journal, uh, sorry, International Conference on Information System, Academic Management, and such reputed conferences. She has also been honored with several awards, including Outstanding Educator Award by Association for Information System AIS Women's Network, and won second prize at Phoenix uh, Best Thesis Award. So a very warm welcome to all of you, all our speakers of the day. So without, without any further ado, I would like to call our speakers to take over and address our audience. Over to you. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Vino. And then uh, uh, we are very happy to be here today to share some of our insight uh, about uh, uh, Metaverse. So everything started with the paper we wrote. We jointly wrote with uh, Marshall and Anu. So today, Anu will be the one actually introducing different section of the presentation and also presenting questions that we want to use to engage with, uh, with the, the participants. So let's wait to have the slide on. Yeah. Amil, can you see the slides? Yeah, screen. Yes, put, put, put into PowerPoint mode, please. Yes. I'm not able to go back. So can I just try again? Yeah. Is it okay? Uh, yes, it's okay now. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So you you can go into the third slide already. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he, he has already introduced ourselves. You are not going to waste. Okay. Fine. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. The next one, uh, I know. Yes. Up to you, I know. Yeah, sorry. I thought we 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 thought that we'll start the session by asking you uh, as to your opinion because we have a lot of people registered here as to what you uh, believe is metaverse. So then we have it a bit more interactive instead of just speaking. So if you can uh, take the time to just log into the Mentimeter, you can scan this QR code here and uh, just share in one word what comes to your mind and what do you think is metaverse. You, you can put multiple answers. Yeah, I can put several words, basically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we have uh, giving a bit time for people to yeah. manage this. So in maybe two minutes, we'll see the results. Mm -hmm.
exciting about some of the results for us. Then I've done my response. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nasir, do you want uh, me to stop it so you can share the results? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> are, you share, are you share? Yeah. Fantastic. So the idea is really to have uh, your own input about your own understanding of. Uh, can you can you see my screen? The yes, results? we can see. Yes, we can see. Yes, we receive it. Uh, interesting uh, response, basically related to uh, virtual world, digital universe, um, virtual reality, virtual reality world, second world. Immersion. Yes, immersion is a is a key word of the metaverse because of the companies especially in the manufacturing and operations and supply chain management context, are trying to provide a, a good immersive experience to do uh, different process and activities. This is an interesting uh, word cloud to start our presentation. Okay. I think what, what, I, what I like the most is like you are in a dream because yeah. <laughs> I think what we shouldn't forget is Metaverse is also having fun. So now we need to see how, to what extent, you know, well, we're going to talk more about this. So so I'm going to share the screen again. Uh, Marseille, okay. thanks a lot. Okay. Also, um, why you put your uh, screen again? Uh, we receive as a response related to a better place uh, to be. Metaverse is a mm -hmm. better place to be. Very interesting. Okay. okay, good. That's interesting. So, so uh, you can just see the. Screen. Yeah, we just yeah. keep going. Next one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Next. So we can see that you know there there's a lot of uh, 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 talk happening out, out there about metaverse. Some will talk about the next digital area is coming with metaverse. Other people are talking about metaverse is a buzzword. Others are saying not. So we just saw that even though everybody is talking about metaverse, we have different uh, understanding of what metaverse is. And through uh, next, you know, through the keyword, the the, the work cloud you just provided, we can see that everybody has his own understanding of what metaverse could be. And there is a lot of definition out there. We just wanted to provide one definition. But there are many, many definitions. But when we take this, this uh, definition is more holistic. So when we talk about metaverse, you can picture metaverse as a space where we have people exchanging ideas using their virtual avatar, for example, in a three D dimension. They will use they will use this uh, within uh, this this virtual space is supported by many many emerging or cutting edge technologies going from artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, blockchain, and so forth. So it's really thinking about the virtual space where people can connect and share ideas, interact, interact with people and interact with other objects. So this is an, a definition we thought is very, very holistic that can help us to basically guide what we, we will talk today. So the question could be, why should we care about metaverse? Why should we care? We should care about metaverse because when we look at what analysts are saying, the vast majority of analysts believe that they predict that the global market of metaverse will expand at an annual rate of about 41.7%, going, for example, from 2021 to 2030 to reach about four to five trillion. So that means there's a market there. There's a lot of uh, value that can be generated by metaverse. And uh, if, if you look, for example, in terms of the participation of people, some analysts like uh, Gardner are predicting that 
25% of people will spend at least one hour per day in metaverse. So we should care. If we have so many people spending time on metaverse, it means that can be a way to sell product, that can be a way to interact, that can be a way to generate value. Yes, we should care. And when we talk about other specific uh, organizations like Accenture that are focusing on how can we use AI, uh, how can we use metaverse within supply chain, the study they did in 2022 concluded that two thirds of supply chain executives they believe that metaverse will in fact have a positive impact on their organization. So you can see that the market is there, it's having a lot of traction, and then executives have started believing of using that within their organization and their supply chain. So yes, we should take. And then when we look at more specific market of what we call the industrial metaverse or the one that mirrors or simulate real machines, factories, cities, transportation network, or any complex system through the convergence of a lot of enabling technologies such as digital twins, IoT, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, 5G or 6G, blockchain, virtual reality, and uh, augmented reality. So this more specific industrial metaverse is actually the one who has the more market value. It's expected to be 100 billion. That means more than the combined market of consumer and uh, organization level value created by metaverse. So yes, we should care about metaverse. So if we should care now of the business value of metaverse in operation, then I know up to you. Yes, so we were wondering uh, if you want to think a little bit more before we kind of share what our perspectives are on. What do you think? How do you think Metaverse can contribute to operations and supply chain management or manufacturing, for your example? So you could like write uh, three words about this. Um, so we still, again, have two minutes and this is a Mentimeter again. So please take the time to scan this QR code and uh, share your thoughts on how do you think uh, Metaverse can contribute, especially in operation and supply chain or manufacturing. No, uh, we already uh, have some response. Uh, I will uh, project my my screen. Yeah, to, uh, you, you to... think it's enough? Yeah, you can go ahead, uh, share your screen if you want. I'll show, stop this. Okay. Can you see it, the work code? Yes, we can see it. They can keep okay, putting good. more information. Good. So Anna will be up to you to comment then after Masha. Yes, yes. So yeah, people, uh, I see a lot of people are, well, it's moving too fast. So people consider that Metaverse can contribute in automation of operations. Uh, also, they speak about virtual manufacturing. It's probably digital twins is what they mean. Uh, collaboration, exchange of information, risk assessment, uh, optimization is something that people think uh, would be uh, important that we could use Metaverse for, and product development, and complex 3D design of, I assume, manufacturing of products, uh, and even processes. Uh, people talk about how we can use Metaverse for innovation, Simulate hard tasks. So basically, yeah, we don't have to waste our resources physically where it's not possible to actually simulate things uh, which are difficult to, to do 
in real life, we could use that metaverse as a means. That's nice. And we can even use metaverse as a new market for, for getting more clients, I suppose. Uh, uh, no, uh, it's very interesting to note that uh, some some words are converging to our paper published in the International Journal of Information Management about some uh, benefits related to uh, collaboration and uh, more connected uh, now and in the future. The companies are expecting a more uh, integration environment with uh, customers and suppliers, um, sharing real-time information. So it will uh, speed up the product development. It is, it's very interesting, these insights shared with us. Yes. Now, are you, are you, are you stop? the this interaction and then go back to the slide presentation wow. give me a minute sharing the screen already or? yes go now into powerpoint mode okay yeah okay so this is okay now yes it's fine so yes what we wanted to do like it was to have your own uh, input before talking about what we prepare for you so basically we wanted to actually uh, try to grab a couple of real case studies where we are people, companies are actually using uh, Metaverse. And then this is really back to link to back, link back to what you just presented. So some people were talking about using this as a digital twin. That means the virtual space where you can simulate some of the, some of the interaction between different components of a company, of an industrial setting. CMN actually is using uh, the digital tools develop a digital tool that is helping customers across all, the, uh, all industries boost their productivity. So they can enable, for example, real-time performance monitoring. They can use this metaverse environment to actually improve, improve their business process management. They can use, as uh, Marshall just spoke about, in order to speed up their, basically, their product development cycle by, by avoiding to create, for example, a physical prototype. So they can exchange ideas about any project, uh, any product development. They can iterate between all the engineers in order to actually facilitate and foster that uh, process. And therefore, they will use that to optimize and automate many of the processes that they are using within the company. Next. So other applications will be related to the use of metaverse to facilitate, for example, the user experience on how to repair, how to maintain, and how to train them in a given product. And therefore, you can use this, for example, and create a virtual environment where they can actually walk through all the visual guidelines that they may use in order to facilitate this maintenance process. And therefore, in terms of benefit, we have the simplification, customer efficiency, and training. Thank you very much. Next. Marshall, up to you. Uh, OK. Um, also, in the manufacturing context, we have uh, Metaverse being used by uh, automakers company. For example, Heno created uh, its uh, name it Renault Metaverse. So uh, the company um, is to save a uh, lot of millions uh, in the next years. For example, uh, some benefits that are uh, achieved is related to the 
production process uh, safeguards. So the company is monitoring in a better way the entire process related to alertness of the uh, production uh, line house. So the company uh, achieved in increase, um, interesting numbers related to the reduction uh, of the line house. Please, uh, no, go ahead, yes. <laughs> so the company detected uh, 300 alerts avoiding uh, uh, 300 production line house. So it expected uh, a lot of improvements in the digitalization of the entire process production. Next, yes, that's very, that's very good. So based on what uh, Marshall just presented, Renault is actually, is actually hoping to reduce the car delivery time by 60%. That's a lot. And they're also planning to use that metaverse infrastructure to actually reduce the car manufacturing carbon footprint by about half of it which is pretty impressive. Yes, like, Samuel, it, it, yes, it, it's important to note that the uh, industrial metaverse and metaverse applied in operations and supply chain management are basically integrated because the manufacturing companies need to integrate uh, suppliers, transportation, among others. So we, are, we need to uh, see this in an interchangeable way. Yes, and then now when you look at, for example, the training, you can see that it can be the, the metaverse infrastructure can be very useful in training, especially in industrial plan workforce, you know, by mapping, for example, all the virtual space, all the asset, all the object and product, and therefore they will, could be used that to simulate critical operations, including, for, for example, the startup of the, the, the plan, the, the, the shutdown of the plan, all the safety response procedure. So this will help actually to facilitate and speed up the integration of new employees and to improve, to improve the learning, learning process. Up to you, Marcel. Yes. Okay, uh, another uh, application um, of Metaverse is to um, Training uh, uh, by the uh, companies, uh, top companies related to uh, aviation. For example, Airbus is using uh, Metaverse to develop an entire virtual cockpit to uh, pilots um, develop their skills about the uh, operating procedures. It's very interesting because the company can save time can improve the standards between the employees and uh, create uh, diverse scenarios about uh, uh, complex situations. Um, next, please. So in the uh, manufacturing uh, aspect, training can be, uh, can speed up the team members integration and the companies are uh, can develop the excellence by uh, employees from different regions uh, around the world for example in this uh, in the bmw group the factory planning uh, integrated with nvidia the company the both companies created the platform named omniverse Omniverse is in the context of the metaverse, but both companies are trying to communicate the uh, unrestricted metaverse. So for example, in a same plant, employees from different regions can interact together in a real time uh, in different uh, activities of the production process. For example, um, in prototype engineering, in testing some, uh, some production and activities, uh, the collaboration will be very, very benefit because the employees cannot travel to receive an excellent training. So in their home, the employees can, can do this. Next, please, Samuel, any comment? Yes. So this is, I, I know, 
Yes, no, we have one last question. Don't worry, this is the last one. We just want to know, sorry. Uh, what in your opinion is the future of metaverse in uh, manufacturing and supply chain? You again have two minutes. So please uh, go to the Mentimeter and share your thoughts with us. Yes, it's the last question. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think is the future of metaverse? So maybe I can, uh, Masia, I can... Uh, Maybe I'll leave it here for a minute. You want it yes. to go? Yes, one minute so you can have time to, to show the slide. Yes, are you are you share the code in the chat also? Okay, great. Okay, we already have some uh, interesting response. Okay. You can share your screen. Yes. Can you see it? This uh, yes, yes, yes. It's coming good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we have uh, diverse responses. Each company will adapt. And we have adoption challenges, which is very important, yes. So in the future, we have to deal with adoption challenges, uh, spread in some sectors. Uh, I mean, maybe we're talking about diffusion of this technology to different sectors. Grow, but not too much. Um, many mm -hmm. people are pessimistic. I, I suppose they're not sure if this would in fact be adopted. They, I think future is also about virtual training might change. More people would use metaverse for virtual training. It could also replace the real world. And I think uh, some have brought up that issue of capital mm -hmm. uh, finances to actually secure such a platform for manufacturing and operations man, uh, operations and supply chain issue. And then we have cross-platform integration is already an issue. Yeah, when it comes to metaverse, people are considering and that will pose a problem also for manufacturing sector as well as operations. Training courses will be, I think we don't see it fully, but I I think it's covering the virtual training aspects. Courses would be probably more immersive and more useful. It improves efficiency early in B2B. So yeah, so people are talking about how it would diffuse into the market. So a suspicion of whether people will adopt to where, where will they adopt first in, maybe in virtual training, and then it will move to starting with B2B, and then it will then probably go to more consumer mm -hmm. level. Yeah, so people. Yeah, I think we see some responses where there's, you say it's great for manufacturing mm -hmm. and it's essential. Yeah, essential part as scratch. I have no idea what that means. I think it means, um, I think we're just well, scratching the surface. Hey, that's good. Yeah, but that's good. Yes. Thanks that's, to already, that's already very good. <laughs> efficiency. Yeah, yeah. many have spoken about efficiency. Yeah. Interesting. Yes, I so I think now I think uh, Samuel and Marcia, they did a wonderful study and yeah. they asked companies, right, uh, as mm -hmm. to what they think and what are they been, what do the companies feel in terms of adoption? So I think uh, we'll have that now. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Okay. So uh, more in terms of how it's changing the operations and supply chain management, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, I know. So yes, we can say that uh, in fact, uh, uh, Metaverse will change in terms of facilitating end-to-end -end visibility, uh, it will enhance, for example, the demand fulfillment cycle, would also help, for example, to have more insight from the end-to-end -end supply chain going from the upstream to downstream supply chain. Actually, is actually one of the viable tool for uh, internal and external collaboration. Next, so for example, if we look at the Hong Kong, the Hong Kong International Airport, their objective was basically to try 
to enhance the operational efficiency and customer experience, basically what you just presented in the World Cloud. So that means they wanted to use the metaverse in order to create a kind of a better customer experience and also to improve their operational efficiency. Through this uh, uh, tool, they are now able to enhance their operational efficiency. They can make them by simulating, they are able to do multiple scenarios based on the number of, for example, travelers and the, 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 the availability of different space within the, the, the airport. They can bet, better plan the passenger flow and therefore improve by removing or adding a digital and physical asset. They can better plan what they have to do during the week and during the, during the, 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 the period where they want to simulate. They can actually help also to design future improvement within the airport. So this is a real example where in a, a, an organization is using the digital to, uh, twin to uh, improve the operational efficiency and customer experience. Next. And this actually, you can click on the link and see, see this is a re another example where we can have the, um, uh, the Rotterdam port is using actually a virtual reality tool to uh, uh, facilitate the visit of their infrastructure. So now in, you can in real time go through that uh, tool and see what you want to, you, you want to fo focus on in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the shipping movement, or even in terms of weather condition. This is an amazing tool to, 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 to look at, to visit the, to do a virtual tour of the, of the, the port. Then uh, what you can see, for example, for DHL, they are using the, the smart glasses for, to facilitate all the warehouse operations in terms of the picking, in terms of the put away, and in terms of the shipping as well. And this has helped them to actually reduce the, the error rate. They also improve the productivity by using this tool and also is contributing to facilitate the training of the new employees. So basically, they do believe that by utilizing this type of tool, they can actually enhance their internal operations and facilitate the, the training of their incoming employees. Next. Marshall. OK, uh, this uh, last part of our presentation uh, will highlight a recent paper published in the International Journal of Operation and Production Management. Um, about metaverse in operation and supply chain management. Uh, the authors uh, are uh, Professor Samuel Fosolamba, Susana Carlos Faria Pereira, e Professor Charbel uh, José Capeta Javur, uh, and I. So, this is one of the first papers uh, about uh, uh, metaverse in supply chain management by an empirical approach. I know, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. So the main question of this paper um, was, what are the metaverse main benefits, challenges, and trends in operations and supply chain management related fields? So this, this question uh, today, the audience also participated in three moments. So in our study, uh, we recruited uh, practitioners with experience in operations uh, and supply chain management. So uh, we developed a web-based survey. Uh, we use it, the, uh, the well-known company uh, Prolific to, uh, to manage our questionnaire. We received a response from, um, from our uh, 150 experts and uh, including more than 12 uh, countries. So we have interesting results. We, we split the respondents in two groups, uh, metaverse adopters in operation supply chain management and non-adopters. So the same questions uh, were made to, uh, to both groups. Related to the uh, top five benefits in the metaverse, by the metaverse in OSCM, the adopters, what, is, uh, ad what are adopters? Uh, in our context, adopters are uh, respondents that their companies 
are using some uh, metaverse approach like uh, smart classes for order picking and augmented reality, virtual uh, reality, uh, etc. So the top five uh, benefits in the metaverse adopters uh, was innovation, efficiency, information sharing, collaboration, and visibility. It's very important to highlight that uh, these benefits are in line with the pool that we uh, had today. Yeah, so, I think three, three of the benefits were actually shared by the participants, like innovation, efficiency, and collaboration. That's fantastic yes. because you confirm our empirical evidence. Yes. yes. Um, the next, next we have the top five benefits uh, highlighted by the no adopters uh, group. The same top five was uh, highlighted. We have innovation, efficiency, information sharing. So we have a, a little difference about the order. Visibility came uh, first, then collaboration. So the no adopters and uh, adopters uh, have similar opinions about the benefits of the metaverse in operations and supply chain management. Uh, also, we we asked to the participants about the uh, challenges of the metaverse in operations and supply chain management. Here, we highlight the five uh, most representative. Uh, in the group of the adopters, we have technology adoption and implementation is, a, is one of the main concern. Lack of worker skills, cost of implementation, security, and uh, uh, privacy. We can see uh, in this group about the uh, Human resource is a big challenge, costs are a challenge, and uh, security and privacy are also uh, important concerns to be considered. I think, again, we have three results similar to our audience who also said adoption could be an issue, and you know they also spoke about finances. Yes. So. Fantastic. Next, we have the uh, top five challenges in the uh, no adopters group. So the first one was uh, cost of implementation. So the no adopters, first of all, are seeing cost of implementation as a big barrier. Next, we have the technology adoption and implementation, security, lack of worker skills, and privacy. It's very, very interesting, the convergence of both groups. Yeah. That's very important. Now uh, we have, we asked about the trends. So now we have the top five trends between the adopters. The first one is related that the adopters see that metaverse will be fully adopted by companies and supply chain in the next years. The second was metaverse adopted only for operational activities. It's a very important. Uh, it's very important to uh, understand this this trend because metaverse is not related to operational activities. Metaverse needs to be explored also in a strategic uh, view. The three was metaverse cost of implementation reduction for uh, supply chains fully digitalized, digitalized in the metaverse and the increased overall supply chain performance enabled by metaverse. So uh, the companies are expecting that the metaverse can support the performance improvement in the key activities and process. Now we have the Top five trends between the no adopters group. The first is related to metaverse will be adopted only by medium and large companies. Uh, this trend is very close to the bahir related to cost uh, 
about the implementation of the metaverse. Uh, the second is metaverse cost of implementation reduction. Metaverse adopted only for operational activities. Increased overall supply chain performance enabled by metaverse. The majority of the metaverse projects will fail. Uh, it's very important to uh, develop uh, new studies about these trends. It, yeah, I think uh, it ties back to, you know, the technology uh, is normally viewed as an opportunity by the early adopters and as a threat by the non-adopters. And I can really <laughs> see that clearly, right? And to, to say that this is the top five, I know you had other results. You've only yeah, that's true. The top five that's true. That's so true. I know we, because yeah. when you talk also about medium and large company, because, you know, we talk about costs. And they believe that the large and medium-sized company are those with a lot of resources, financial mm -hmm. resources to engage in such complex projects. Yes. Great. Uh, now we have the, some uh, emerging practical issues. Um, we highlight only, uh, we discovered uh, three main categories. Uh, the first one is related to metaverse technology adoption and implementation. In this category, uh, we highlight three main representative uh, emerging protocol issues. The first one is related to governance and standardization. This is a big issue because there are uh, a big effort by top companies to develop the patterns and to standardize the practice in the metaverse. Uh, also, we have privacy and security being uh, representative concerns and ethical issues, for example, and the diffusion through the network. The adoption uh, is not an easy task because in a supply chain context, we need to uh, mobilize uh, different uh, members and them uh, sharing the knowledge about the metaverse, develop uh, process and activities uh, together in an integrated and coordinated way. Next. Ne next category, we have the metaverse social perspective. So in this category, um, here we highlight three main uh, representative uh, topics. The first one is related to the organizational culture and stakeholder commitment. Stakeholder uh, culture is a decisive point to the metaverse uh, be adopted. Also, uh, the lack of worker skills also represent uh, a big issue. All these emerging practical issues can be uh, investigated by practitioners and scholars. We have excellent opportunities to advance uh, this field. The, uh, also, uh, we have top management support. Top management support is very re related to organization culture. If the company uh, does have a good organization culture, the top management support, uh, you fail. Next, please. Uh, the last category is about the process optimization. We discovered that uh, in the supply chains and manufacturing, uh, several companies are very interested in improve their process. So by integrating metaverse with uh, artificial intelligence uh, and the algorithm development for the uh, save costs or gain efficient uh, performance. Uh, we have three representative subcategories, perception of value by customers, organization, and society. This is a big part here. How the customers and the stakeholders uh, are seeing the value created by metaverse. Uh, business process, modeling, and remodeling and the sustainable business models. Please, the next, we have only two more uh, yeah. slides. Uh, we, we will highlight only the main topics about because this, uh, we, 
this about the opportunities for scholars and practitioners. For example, in the manufacturing and operations management, we need uh, more studies to investigate these challenges and benefits in a deeper way. In the healthcare uh, context, uh, we need to investigate um, how metaverse can contribute to uh, telemedicine adoption, surgical operations, um, in the sustainability uh, perspective. Uh, how metaverse can be used to uh, improve the minimization of pollution, carbon reduction, traffic congestion, among others. Uh, related to supply chain disruptions, uh, metaverse can, can improve and support the resilience of the supply chains because of the end-to-end -end, uh, visibility, a more coordinated and integrated I don't know, it needs to be explored uh, by future studies. Uh, human resource management. Uh, we saw that this is a big challenge for metaverse adoption. Next, please. Finally, we have metaverse in tourism and hospitality. Uh, for example, how can metaverse can enhance the book purchase process? Uh, how in the field of diversity, equity, and inclusion. How can metaverse be uh, increased to the, the diversity, equity, and inclusion by manufacturing companies? What is the role of metaverse related to the governance in the supply chain? What are the main ethical concerns and how to outperform these concerns? We have interesting uh, topics and research questions that can be integrated in the, by scholars and also by uh, practitioners and government. So it seems like this is the end. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. So, so we are happy to take some questions, questions and yeah. interact with you. Yeah. Let's engage with questions. Yeah, thank you very much, first of all, uh, for such a wonderful and informative session, which even I was eagerly looking forward to, because I couldn't relate how Metaverse can be adopted in this uh, operation and uh, manufacturing. So uh, the discussion on opportunities and challenges associated with Metaverse in manufacturing and operation management was eye-opener for me as well. <laughs> interesting to see uh, some example of businesses which are using Metaverse. That was also interesting piece. I found that piece very interesting. So before I take question, I have a question if I can ask uh, any one of you. So how can company prepare for arrival of Metaverse in manufacturing and operation management? Because uh, some are adopting, but not all. So, um, what is your take on that? How they can take competitive advantage when they can take to that level that it has it can become a competitive advantage, not business value, but business value to competitive advantage. Yeah. Well, let me try. I think that you know, like uh, like any other technological innovation, you need to always start with your business problem. What are you trying to solve? You know, you you shouldn't trying to look at only the technological perspective. So I think that company that will be uh, capitalizing on the uh, high potential of this type of tools are those who are trying to solve their issues. You identify a business problem, you, you, you assess how this tool or part of this tool may help you to achieve competitive advantage. And then for sure, you will need to have uh, required skills, you need to think about, uh, are you going to do that uh, through phases? Uh, how are you going to approach this type of uh, project? So I, I, for me, it's not very really different to traditional uh, I, technological innovation adoption problems. What is difficult is just in terms of, of the complexity and the size, because if you are trying to uh, implement at the supply chain level, then you need to look at which, which supplier, which, which customer want to start at least the pilot, and then how am I going to scale up all this project? So this is my take on that. Right, thank you, thank you. I think um, I just want to add that we must remember that, you know, we achieve competitive advantage, uh, like, you know, by also reducing costs or creating a new solution. So as we saw, one of the main uh, advantages that people see is to innovate using uh, metaverse. So I guess there's a lot of scope for innovation for new products. 
which then can give you also a good competitive advantage in the market in the future. But I guess what's important is to, again, go back to one of the challenges that we found, I mean, in the, uh, Samuel and Marcel found in their study, uh, they spoke about uh, how, how can we identify the value? How can we communicate the value of, you know, created through use of metaverse. So I think that's an important point. So even if you use metaverse as a man, as any of the company for your operations management or manufacturing for that matter, what needs to ultimately what will create the competitive advantages when the consumers or uh, whoever is your client actually believes that it's increasing the quality. So there is a step of, I think they need to be prepared to communicate the value uh, in order to create the competitive advantage, and if, especially if they are playing on uh, increasing the quality of the product. That's something to consider. I think that's a challenge. So that's like how Samuel said, I think if you have more people involved in the supply chain, and then the, there is more probability that your product or your processes will have more quality and therefore visibility also outside of which, whichever the company is adopting. So that's I guess... Yeah. Uh, no, and then you need also to think about okay, creating and capture because if you are at the network level, maybe the value will be created by some, and this value can be captured downstream. So that means if somebody is creating the value and the other person is capturing the value, and then you raise the question of how do we share then the value? If I'm investing in putting in place the metaverse infrastructure, and my customer are basically using that infrastructure to capture the value that I'm creating. Therefore, we need to think about what uh, Marshall was saying, sustainable business model. So what will be the best business model that is able to basically share the cost and share the benefit generated by, by this metaverse infrastructure? Right, thank you so much, thank you so much. So with the kind permission, can we take a few questions from the audience? Uh, we have uh, Chintan Parikh who works with Siemens and uh, he, he made a comment when we were covering the slide, the uh, challenges which are associated with the adoption of Metaverse. So challenges that he sees in his company Siemens is cost of device and 5G connectivity. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question uh, that he asks is uh, that uh, there are, this is a use case driven space uh, till now. So uh, finding use cases are difficult uh, to find and uh, it requires push from IT and uh, global business functions. So what is your take on that? I, I think he just mentioned the answer too, right? I mean, I think it's more like an opinion. And uh, what I see is that his, he sees the main challenge is cost of device and 5G connectivity, which again, I think their study clearly pointed out that uh, in order to actually engage with metaverse or as it is as metaverse are being developed right now, the technology is being de is developing as well. But yes, we know that to use it is very cost uh, is difficult to buy those uh, graphic uh, designer um, uh, devices to actually run a simulation in metaverse. So that's it's nothing to say in that. I think it's it's a real challenge. Yeah, I don't know about the five G connectivity and how that is seen as a challenge. So. It's, Samuel or Marcia? Yeah, and I tell you, their question is uh, up, up uh, is right, is the, is the best one. <laughs> Unless Marcel has something to add. Yes, well, uh, as, uh, related to the, the challenge, I think that is more, uh, <laughs> emerge more than the benefits in this first stage of the metaverse. So we, we had, uh, other questions from the audience that are uh, integrated, for example, uh, about the trust among uh, partners. Um, on, the other, on the other hand, we have the cost related to uh, device acquisition, for example, in, in, in some case. In uh, other case, we have the complexity related to uh, share information between members in the supply chain. Which type of information can be shared? And can I share with all supply chain members? It's a very important uh, question. Uh, because of this, um, I, I put in the chat uh, uh, a web uh, address about the standardization of the metaverse. This is uh, effort by 
big companies that are trying to develop the standards and the governance of the metaverse. It's very hard because the traditional regulators are not uh, prepared for this uh, for this new way of operations. So uh, we have great opportunities, uh, great, great opportunities to advance and contribute to this field. So I, may, I may add that, you know, like it's already very challenging to implement a single technology within one organization. And then now if you have to create this metaverse uh, space where you have a convergence of many complex uh, IT technological innovation, such as digital twins, IoT, AI, cloud, 5G. So connecting all these tools together to function in a given space, for sure, is going to create more complexity. It's going to create more challenges in terms of ensuring that we have interoperability within them and across them, and that we are actually able to, let's say, for example, collect in real time all the uh, data generated by all by, by all these IoT devices, apply some analytical tools on this to do prediction, share among all stakeholders in real time to make prediction and to react to do some kind of predictive maintenance within this space is challenging. But you know, it's not because it's challenging that we, we shouldn't be pushing towards this kind of uh, vision of having a space where we can actually simulate uh, machinery, simulate new cities or transport network. So I think the, the, the future for me is actually very bright and then we should work hard to achieve this kind of vision, at, at least at a, 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 a small scale and then try to scale up uh, the, the, the benefit that will be generated for pilot study and uh, proof of concept, basically. All right. Um, so we can take one more, I think, uh, which which only remained. Uh, the metaverse will be open to new new dimension of sustainability. Uh, though <laughs> Professor uh, Michel Kiros answered that mainly in the resource scarcity the scarcity scenarios. But uh, any take on sustainability dimension and how metaverse um, is open for the same or not? Well, actually, for me, I think that is helping a lot because now imagine instead of buying material to do prototyping of many products, just by avoiding to do the prototyping, you know, that means you are saving a lot of resources. And then, you know, being able just let to, to do the virtual training instead of bringing all employees of a given company uh, in, a, in a, a physical space to do the training. So there's a lot of value related to metaverse in creating a different dimension of sustainability. So for sure, we, we are going to, 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 to have that dimension there. But you also have the other part where as soon as you are connecting a lot of devices, you are having a lot of IoT component that are interacting between them, generating a lot of, using a lot of energy, generating a lot of waste. So now the question will be for a given application, how do we reach the balance where the benefit are more than challenges that are created by implementing such a platform? Yes, I think that's important to consider. And going back to the social issue of the sustainability angle, I mean, we're still talking about digital divide, and we must not like you know this is this is the it's a new technology, and just like uh, even even now we don't see internet being available in certain countries, and this is going to take time for those companies to actually adopt, right? So, and um, and I completely agree. I think it's very important to look at the green auditing uh, of these usage of metaverse for any purpose when a company uses although that's why i think i would go back to what samuel mentioned about the need do you really need metaverse to come up with this process optimization or the supply chain management or to come up with this new innovation if you don't need it don't waste the resources i would say so but if the company really but the but what i'm saying is for big companies with projects which can cost a lot where you can't do trial and error in with real materials this is like a boon to those kind of companies and definitely they will save a lot of money 
uh, when they use metaverse. So there's cost benefit uh, to every situation, but I guess we shouldn't forget that uh, in the future, all companies would be asked, at least in Europe, as per the regulation, to, to comment on the green auditing of their activities. And that's going to be a challenge because at the moment, we do not know how to quantify many of these sustainable sustainability issues that may come in, come into uh, you know effect when we actually use metaverse uh, full fledged yeah true true that's really very interesting so uh thank you so much uh, professor samuel dr Mitchell, and uh, dr andragni for taking question and taking your precious time for this talk it was really really very very interesting and uh, many thanks to professor yogesh kumar devedi dr Lauri hughes and uh, Professor Ramakrishnan Daman for conceiving this idea of seminar series and also for creating such a wonderful platform to discuss very contemporary theme that is related to many industries, emerging perspective on the metaverse. So I'd like to thank all our guests who have joined from all around the globe today. Last but not the least, I'd like to thank Mr. Nilesh and his team for IT support. Uh, so before we leave, uh, there are announcements for the next seminar series one and uh, the link for the uh, next seminar uh, for this session is already posted on the chat. So before we leave, I'd like to announce that next seminar, which is scheduled on 17th May 2023, where Professor Neev Chetri from University of North Carolina, USA, will join us to touch upon uh, again a very interesting topic, which, which, which talked about in today's research agenda as well. Uh, pollution reducing and pollution generating effects of metaverse so request all to mark the date on calendar so that's all for today so looking forward to see you all in the next seminar thank you once again have a great time ahead thank you